Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. We are uh, in an interesting place in the book of Matthew, uh, an interesting place where, where Jesus is speaking in a much different tone than we normally get. You know, when you look at uh, a good chunk of his teaching earlier in the book of Matthew uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is speaking very encouraging, very hopeful. There's challenges at points as he encourages us to be uh, more aggressive in our obedience and our trust to him. But we get to Matthew uh, chapter 23, Jesus gets uh, pretty direct with the Pharisees. And uh, last week I talked about just the the tension that existed between Jesus and the group of Pharisees and the scribes and and the religious leaders of that day. But here Jesus gets into a section referred to as the seven woes. These are seven condemnations he gives to the Pharisees. These seven um, condemnations really about how they were completely off base and how they were leading, how they were living, how they were believing. And so I want to read the last one to us today, Matthew 23, um, starting in verse uh, 29. He says this, he says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, he says, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would have not taken part in them shedding the blood of our prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then with the measure of your prophets. You serpents, he says, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of whom you will kill and crucify, some of whom you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from all the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I tell you, All these things will come upon this generation. And see, he's referencing the the past that they had of rejecting the messengers, these prophets of God. Not just rejecting and saying, we don't agree with it, but rejecting them to the point of murdering them and saying, we don't like this message from God that you're delivering, so we're going to kill you. And see, the prophets uh, were many years before Jesus and these prophets or these Pharisees rather are like, well, that wasn't us. We wouldn't do that. And he goes, yes, you would. And what we'll learn in the coming chapters is that they may have said, well, we wouldn't kill the prophets of old, but they went on to kill the very son of God and savior of the world by orchestrating his arrest, by leveraging their influence with government to call for his crucifixion and being the ones championing his uh, sentence to death on a cross. And really, I think as we look at these seven woes, and we get to this last one here uh, of their desire to kill the prophets and that being the final woe. I think what we see as a theme here is that Jesus is speaking out against the Pharisees' desire to build religion rather than a relationship to the Savior of the world. Their desire to build a system of religious actions and statements and images and actions that are shown on the outside, but on the insides, he calls them hypocrites. It's people who didn't actually have a desire to connect with the God of the universe. And the same is true for us today. God is not interested in our religion. When we define religion just by the actions that we take, by going through the motions, by looking good on the outside, by portraying an image of someone with moral superiority and someone who has acts of piety and and things that we do on the outside, he's not interested in any of that if that's all we're doing. What he's interested in is a relationship with us. He's interested in us from the inside, acknowledging him as the savior of the world on the inside saying, hey, I love you and want to submit my life to you from the inside going, because I love you and see you as the Lord of my life, because of that, my life will include these things that overlap with religion of being involved in church and seeking to live a life that is more honoring to you and my morality. And, and really that coming from the inside, not just trying to do it on the outside. But also he speaks to them as hypocrites. He says, hey, you act like someone who loves and follow God, but you don't actually do any of the things that acknowledge me as Lord. See, in, in Luke chapter six, Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? See, Jesus isn't happy with us and and, uh, and encouraged when we just go through the motions of religion. He's encouraged when we see him as the Lord of our life, 
when we submit to, trust, honor, and obey his authority in our life. So I want to challenge you today. Are you building a life built on religion like the Pharisees, built on looking good on the outside, but on the inside there's, there's no love or passion for the God of the universe? Are you building a life built on religion and based on helping or, or creating an image where people see you as the religious person, as the, the goody two-shoes, as the person who has moral superiority, or are you really seeking to honor and obey Jesus from the inside out? Because at the end of the day, God isn't interested in acts of religion. He's interested in our efforts to build a relationship, to trust him, to follow him, to honor him, and to obey him with our life. And I hope that that's the life that you're building in your relationship with God, not one that's built on empty religion. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.